So, I just got done watching Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie, and now I'm going to review it. I bet you people were not expecting this. Now, before any of you get excited, this is not going to become a regular thing on my channel. I, I know I usually don't make reviews, but this is a very rare exception. They came out with this, and I wanted to get my thoughts out on it while it's still, like, new or whatever. So, a little backstory. Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie is a spin-off movie of the TV show Spongebob Squarepants. Now, I love the t TV show. Big, big fan of Spongebob. Spongebob was my a big part of my childhood. Spongebob Squarepants has been running for, for 25 years now. That's crazy. And finally, after 25 years, this is their first attempt at trying to do a full-on Spongebob spin-off movie. I know they've done some, like, TV spin-offs before, which, like, Camp Coral, Coral, Spongebob's Under Years, and the Patrick Star show, but Saving Bikini Bottom is their first attempt at doing, like, a full-on spin-off Spongebob movie, and not a t TV show. I know this movie got leaked online on, through Twitter, X on in January 2024. I didn't watch that leak because I wanted to wait for the official release. And Paramount Global was quick to take down any uploads of that movie online before the official release date. I've only watched this movie once at the time of this recording. I will say I went into this movie completely fresh by the way, like, ob obviously I know the other uh, TV show, I know the characters, but I, I didn't see anything of this movie before watching it. In fact, I did not even watch the trailer for this movie. Yeah, th that's just how fresh I wanted it to be. I, th I think I might have seen a few, like, screenshots or, like, very short clips of the movie. But I didn't, but other than that, I pretty much watched nothing of this movie before it came out, and I watched it. Before you ask, yes, I did make sure to watch this movie completely legally through Netflix, because that's where it was coming out on. Yeah, I have a Netflix account. I actually made sure to put this movie on my watch list as a reminder before it came out on August 2nd, 2024. I almost forgot to mention, but yeah, I've watched the other sweet Spongebob movies that came out before Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. Again, don't expect me to be showing much footage in this review, because I, I want to get the video copyright blocked. Like I said earlier, Paramount Global was pretty quick to take down leaked copies of this movie back in January 2024. Again, even though I'm talking, I still don't want to risk the uh, copyright. So, so, so yeah, just get used to seeing this poster on screen for the vi whole video pretty much. I guess I can start talking about the plot. Though the film opens up with Sandy coming out of her house and riding on a robotic horse. She starts singing a song about her personality and what she does. The citizens of Bikini Bottom jo join her in on her song. Of course, this song helps to set up what kind of person Sandy is. Or to help remind the audience or, or even inform newer viewers that, that might be watching this movie. Then after the song ends, Spongebob comes out of his health and he wants to show Sandy a, tr a trick that he does with his jellyfish net and a t toy jellyfish. As Spongebob is tr trying to get good at this, 
Fatty notices the giant claw coming down from the surface. So she grabs SpongeBob and the they ride away on the robotic horse and manage to escape the giant claw just barely though. Of course the, the other Bikini Bottom citizens don't notice the giant claw coming down until it's too late and they st start panicking with all kind of gags around it. I will say that the humor in this movie is already spot on. Lots of funny jokes and the Bikini Bottomites are panicking as their city is getting taken away. As the giant claw is being taking away Bikini Bottom, Fanny looks closely on the claw and notices it says Boots, which is the name of a science lab in Texas. Spongebob starts crying when he realizes his friends are gone. Meanwhile, Sandy comes up with a way to get Bikini Bottom back and all of Spongebob's friends. Sandy and Spongebob ride bubbles to the surface and then land on a plane for the next 14 hours. Sandy conveniently uses super hydration lotion on Spongebob because, because of course this movie had to come up with some kind of excuse to keep Spongebob alive on the surface world. Once the plane gets to Galveston, Texas, S Sandy and Spongebob jump off the plane. Sandy uses a gliding ability, ability and then all kinds of chaos ensue that lands them in the desert. Bikini Bottom discovers that they are in a science lab and the boss at the science lab discovers that Sandy and Spongebob are missing. Back in the desert, Sandy and Spongebob run into tr some trouble when snakes come after them. And Sandy tries to fight them off, but the snakes have the upper hand. Then Sandy's family comes in in a truck and saves the Spongebob and Sandy from the snakes. I do like how we get to see Sandy's family in this movie. As Sandy's family is rarely to never seen in the actual TV show. So I liked how this movie revealed a lot about Sandy's family in Texas. Spongebob and Sandy go with the squirrel family in their truck to get to the, to the science lab faster. In the science lab they explained that they kidnapped Bikini Bottom to use for their Project Sea Pals. Spongebob and Wandy fix the truck's engine and the squirrel family prepares a meal to eat for in the morning. At the science lab they won all kinds of phase te tests with the sea creatures much to their dismay. The Cheek family get, get into a high speed police chase where more chaos ensues. Once they get closer to the lab, the squirrel Cheeks family shoot Spongebob and Sandy out of a cannon and land them right in the water park they, they were looking for. That's right beside the science lab. Sandy and Spongebob make it to the science lab after having to escape an angry dog and going through the sewers. Spongebob and he find their friends held captive in the science lab. They capture Spongebob and Sandy. Then the boss explains her backstory and the reason why she is doing all of this. The scientists clone Spongebob into a bunch of tiny little Spongebobs. One of those t little tiny Spongebobs tells Sandy to not give up and be considerate. Sandy manages to break out of the cage and attack Tsunami, the, the boss. After defeating the boss, Tsunami, Mr. Krabs discovers that if he squishes a bunch of the little Spongebobs together, they reconstitute. Though so Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Patrick 
grab a bunch of the tiny SpongeBob and we and squish them all together to form the original SpongeBob again. A glass bowl the bik Bikini Bottom citizens are trapped in gets cracked and starts leaking. So they have to find a way to get them back under the sea before the, the glass bowl completely drains out of water. SpongeBob does a bad attempt at whistling that summons the t tornado to the g break the top of the science lab and call Sandy's family over. Sandy tells the Cheeks family a about the situation. So the Cheeks family and some of the Bikini Bottomites team up to together using science to build a contraption that launches the glass ball back into the ocean. Back in the ocean, the Krusty Krab ha holds a circus act where th the Cheeks family performs. After that, the movie ends. So there's your recap of the plot. Now that I just got done watching the entire movie, what do I think about it? Uh, I liked it. The animation in Saving Bikini Bottom, the, the Sandy Cheeks movie, is good. The animation is just like the Spongebob movie, Sponge on the One. So if you like the animation in the third Spongebob movie, then you'll like the animation in Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. Because they basically use the same 3D animation in both movies. I liked the humor throughout. This film was pretty funny, if I'm being honest. A lot of parts made me laugh. And yes, they do throw in the My Leg gag in this movie. A couple times, actually. I thought the plot was nice. It, it, it was able to hold my attention. I thought the story moved at a good pace. I liked some of the action that goes on in this movie, especially during the snake scene. The new stuff they introduce in this movie is pretty enjoyable for the most part. Like I said when I was talking about the plot, I, I like seeing Sandy's family, which you rarely ever get to see in the TV show. And yeah, I know some of the effects with Tsunami the Boss are a little cheesy. But most of the other effects in this movie are pretty good, honestly. I like the songs in this movie, and a lot of the acting was good. I like the special effects as well. Doing a Sandy Cheeks spin-off movie works in its favor, because now they're finally, after 25 years, able to expand on Sandy's family, which is, again, like I said, is rarely ever explored in the, the TV episodes and the other spin-offs, so like Camp Coral. Overall, I had a pretty fun time with this movie, to be honest. For the first Spongebob movie to be released exclusively on streaming, I thought they did a good job. This, this is a good movie in my opinion. If I were to give this movie a rating, I, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah. That, that's just how much I enjoyed this movie. Again, again they could, maybe they could have had some slightly better effects in the lab. Maybe there's a couple things they could have trimmed here and there. But overall, this movie's great. Oh, look, on Netflix, I'm even going to rate it as love it. Or love this, because I did, honestly. I would recommend this movie if you're a Spongebob fan or a Sandy Cheeks fan who wants to see more of her family. Again, if you can enjoy some of the goofy fun that goes on in this movie, you might get, hopefully get some enjoyment out of it. So yeah, there's my review of Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. Again, I usually don't do these kind of videos, but this was an, an exception to that. Anyways, that's going to be it for my review of this movie, so goodbye.